mass and density. So density is the mass per unit volume. Density is a derived quantity from mass divided by volume. And you can see in this picture how density varies with height above sea level. The air is denser, the blue is darker at sea level, the air is thinner miles above sea level. So the air is thinner on top of the mountain. The air is thinner in Denver, and that's why there are different cooking instructions, right? Denser at sea level. The force of gravity, molecules accumulate towards the earth. The downward force of gravity and molecules are compressed into a smaller volume and density increases. Remember, density equals mass divided by volume, or the amount of mass per unit volume. Density increases as mass increases or volume decreases. So imagine a packed subway car, high density. Imagine an empty subway car, low density. Cut the size of the subway car in half. You're going to increase the density. Double the size of the subway car. Increase the volume. You're going to decrease the density. Now, elasticity. So remember, we had two properties, mass and now elasticity. All matter, gas, liquid, or solid, will undergo distortion of either shape or volume, or both, when a force is applied to it. And all matter is characterized by the tendency to recover from distortion. Elasticity enables the recovery from distortion. So push your hand on the desk. What happens? It flattens out. Lift your hand up. It comes back to its normal shape. Elasticity recovers distortion. So the ability to resist change or shape and volume is elasticity. Elasticity, remember the capital E, the property that enables recovery from distortion. And everything has an elastic limit. Air has its own elastic limit. It's a very large elastic limit, but there's an elastic limit to air. So imagine a weight is attached to a spring suspended from a ceiling. When you remove the weight, the spring goes back to its original shape. Elasticity enables recovery from distortion. If the spring were overloaded, if it had this really huge weight on it that exceeded its elastic limit, the deformation would be permanent. Everything has an elastic limit, some small, some large. The elastic limit for air is very large. When we break the elastic limit for air, you hear a sonic boom. So elasticity is the tendency of a volume of air to return to its former volume after compression. You could put a plunger in that tube and compress all the air into a smaller space and increase the density. When you remove the plunger, the air molecules return to their former position, the density of the air is restored, and this is called the restoring force of elasticity. So to review, to be a sound source, you must have mass and elasticity. To be a medium to transmit sound, you must have mass and elasticity. To some degree, everything has mass and elasticity. Some are better than others. Density is mass divided by volume. If you change the mass or you change the volume, you're going to change the density of something. Elasticity enables the recovery of distortion, from distortion. You need both mass and elasticity to be a sound source and to be a transmitting medium.